Hi everybody, welcome back to the cabin. I had a nice surprise when I walked down the trail and went to the back of the cabin, looked down on the valley. Same spot that I saw that bear before. Actually just lying down there and picking away at something. So, so I got the camera on of him. I think I got a little bit of video, but I also had a trail camera set up down there. So got some pretty good images of him actually. So in this episode, what I want to do is get into this joint here in the wall. I've had a lot of questions about it and a lot of concerns and rightfully so. So, uh, so let's jump right into it. I hadn't even 100% decided if I was going to trim these log ends. Uh, some people comment that they kind of like the look of it kind of staggered in and out. And it uh, just gives it a more rustic look and I didn't really disagree. But I think it would just bother me if I don't trim them all nice and uh, flush with each other and plumb. So I'm going to do that right now. And I didn't want to do it now. I'm concentrating on getting the roof done. But the problem is I won't be able to saw in there very well. So I have to trim this off now. So I'm going to do that quickly and then I'll get back on the roof. Yeah, so these windows, gotta love having a frugal wife who can find good deals on things. Seem pretty good quality. They came out of uh, somebody's home that was being renovated, and of course they're still perfectly fine. Perfect for this cabin, so I've got a bunch of these things that we got for free, so. This is that big operating window I said we're going, I want on the west side so we can look out at the nice scenery out here, but also to get that cross breeze coming in through and clearing smoke and, and uh, warm air out of the cabin. So what I need to do is frame that in and also create some support right up to that higher beam. So let's see what I can do here. Go 64 and a half, I'll have an inch of settling on top. Maybe I'll go 65 and I can have a full inch and a half for that uh, upper log to start settling down on it. So 65, I'm going to come up from here so it's that high off the ground. So it's not buried in snow. Basically going to frame the window in. Because I need a guide anyway to keep my saw. thing about using a handsaw. It's time consuming so it's easy to as you're sawing so you can easily get off off the uh, plumb line especially kind of left and right so I might frame it on the inside as well so you want to have this frame as a solid guide
It's almost like the wildlife know that it's the day after Thanksgiving and I'm still full. First that bear this morning and the gross lands here while I'm having butter tarts for lunch. <laughs> and my bow is literally like right beside me. I've had this for a long time too, over 20 years. Uh, what is it, 60, 52 pounds at 28 inches. I draw maybe 28 and a half. Flu flu arrows with uh, these big oversized feathers so it slows the arrow down in the air. You can actually shoot at birds or squirrels or something up in a tree without losing the arrow. So if I was going to shoot that grouse I would use that arrow. It's a quiver I made for it back then too. says on the back of it, when a leaf falls in the forest, the eagle sees it, the deer hears it, and the bear smells it. It's a testament to the senses, strong senses that these animals have, and the bear in particular with his nose. They say they can smell things like seven miles away. Actually, better maybe shakes than than uh, shims. I'm looking for shims for the window. I need a pretty good taper on them so I can slide them in. So I do need some thick ones. Let's see if I can get a couple of thinner ones out of here. If you're new to bushcraft, I don't talk about stuff like that very often, I guess I should. When you're carving something with a, a knife, always better to try to get the knife stationary against a solid surface. Well, in this case, I'm resting it against my knee because my arm's hurting. It hurts to get that angle. So if I can just brace it there and pull the stock towards me, that knife can't go into my leg because it's not going anywhere, it's stationary. I've got to be careful when I do this that I don't make this too tight because that window will, when I open that window, it could, uh, it might not open first of all, but even when it opens, it might not close properly again if these are too tight. The only way I'm going to find that out is if I remove those braces on the outside. You notice that hit the, the roof, the overhang. I knew that was going to happen, and it's kind of a function of the overhang that I wanted on an angle. Otherwise, if I had used a truss system, I would have had I would have had a stringer come out, and then the roof starts from there up. So whatever the top of the wall is becomes the bottom of your overhang, like a typical home. And then you see that soffit flat. Uh, that's the bottom of the truss. 
So in this case, I knew this overhang was going to impede this window. I don't care about it too much. I think that's open enough. If we find that it's not opening enough because we want more airflow, then I'll cut out this section of the roof. I'll raise it up and add sort of a feature, sort of like a dormer over the window. But I don't think I'll end up doing that. But anyway, it's an option. It's pretty easy to do after the fact. So I'll leave it like this for now. So my intent with this is that these two two by sixes in here are nailed into the ends of these logs here. And then this is nailed to those upright two by sixes, but not to that top one up there. So what that does is allows that to settle, to come down and transfer the weight down to here without, uh, without affecting that window at all. So like I said before, I think that'll work and I'll just have to monitor over the years to see as the cabin's settling, make sure it doesn't come too close to that window. If it does, it'd be pretty easy just to take a notch out of that top log that runs 12 feet across here and spans past the window with no joint. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's very solid. This whole wall is really solid now. So yeah, I'm happy with it. Got that one window in, a little bit of the roof, and started laying out the second window for the other side of the cabin. So it's a day after Canadian Thanksgiving, so I'm sure you can guess what I'm having for dinner. You know, it's been, how long? It's been uh, 17, what, 17 years, 16, 17 years since I've had a property, a, a property of my own. I've been doing mostly backcountry trips. So a lot of my gear is more geared towards those kind of trips. So hunting trips and canoe trips and fishing trips that aren't at a base camp. So now that I have a base camp again, I'm starting to outfit myself for that. The Cabela's moved into the nearest town to where I live, so course that's dangerous when you're an outdoorsman I no longer have to look through the catalog and then order something when it's when I can go pick it up in in half an hour so I picked up a new grill this week for the fire so I'm gonna set this up and then I'm going to just heat up my leftovers from Thanksgiving dinner and that's going to be my dinner for tonight of course Very simple setup Somebody made the point last week, and of course they're right about the uh, smoke, although you can't really do much if the wind's blowing right towards you. But if I create a chimney on that side of higher rocks, even if I get it about that high and then lower in the front, what happens is that that uh, creates a chimney effect. So the rocks heat up and the wind and the smoke actually will travel up that and then get up above me at least, even if it's blowing that way. So I should start working on that next week. And then the rocks on this side would be lower and then I can move the bench back here and work from this side. One thing you do have to be careful this time of year if sparks from your fire. Usually our falls are pretty damp but we've had a bit of a dry spell lately. So the leaves are pretty dry so I'm just going to move them back from the fire. I've got a water jug here too handy in case I need to douse flames.
All right, so I'm making dinner and the bear's back. I wasn't sure what to do about the bear, but uh, it's not showing any fear. It looks to me like it's either a young male, maybe three years old, not that young, or a dry sow, a dry female. That could be a little bit older. It's not huge, it's under 200 pounds, I would say. It's got a nice thick coat and it's healthy. That's fine. I like having bears around. But when I was standing there at the end of the cabin, looking down at that valley, filming a segment, and I look over and there's the bear watching me. The fact that he didn't want to leave is a little bit concerning. Mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, beets. I think there might be turnip in there, and turkey and stuffing. Happy with this grill so far, because this is going to be permanent, this fire pit here. It, but it's not my main cooking fire pit. I want to build a, a full kitchen over here out of rock and have it elevated so I can stand at it like a barbecue. But I probably quite often will cook on here so this tripod will, I'll put into use. And then this, it's convenient because I don't have to set rocks, you know. You know when you try to put rocks on the edge of the fire and then balance your grill on it or, or balance it on logs that are actually burning. It's a bit of a pain. It's, shifts and you can't really get a big enough flame in there and it's hard to get enough coals right directly under it so this thing just swings in and out so I'll keep it out here I think and keep using it. If you've ever spent time in the woods at this time of year when the leaves are down and it's really dry hasn't rained in a few days everything sounds like a bear or a big moose or something walking through the bush so all these squirrels and chipmunks are running around getting ready for the winter so they're extremely active and they're really finding a lot around the cabin for some reason. He's still down there and I'm not sure if it'll come up around the camp. So I haven't seen any tracks around the cabin itself so I'm not all that worried about him coming up here and doing any damage. He seems to be content with whatever he's got down there so anyway let me know if he comes sneaking up behind me. I might just think it's a squirrel or chipmunk. And I'm gonna eat out of the pan again because part of what attracted that bear probably the first time down to that spot is that's where I clean my dishes and get my drinking water so I won't be going down there and cleaning dishes tonight likely. But while I'm sitting here I just wanted to mention a couple of viewers. I keep mentioning how how grateful I am for all the comments that I've been getting and I truly am overwhelmed by the number and the and how respectful and uh, complimentary you've been. But some of the ones that really stand out of course all the personal stories I'm like I just can't say enough about about uh, about the stories you've been sharing about your own personal lives but one thing that also has been very touching is the number of kids that are either commenting themselves or I'm hearing from their parents that they're watching my videos and that they really appreciate them and they're inspired by them. I think that's awesome. I mean, if I could have one wish for my channel, if it inspired some uh, younger people to get outdoors more and, and uh, got them off the video games and got them interested in doing this kind of thing, that would be reward enough for me. And ironically, my own kids have started watching some of the videos lately, which they really didn't expect. They're used to hearing me talk about self-reliance and outdoors, probably <laughs> driven them crazy with it over the years, in fact. Um, they're at that stage that they've got a lot else, a lot of other things going on in their lives, so they don't get out very often outside. Um, but because the channel has been growing and, and uh, videos have been getting a lot of views, it's kind of piqued the interest of both my daughters and they're checking it out. In fact, my older daughter's been watching with her boyfriend. Uh, as you recall, one of the videos a few weeks ago that I recorded talked about uh, about boyfriend. So, not sure if he watched that one or not. I just uh, wanted to give a particular shout out to Matthew Harris and his kids, uh, Sawyer, who's a six-year-old son, and Riley, thir his 13-year-old daughter. Uh, they've been watching the videos and apparently they've been uh, glued to them. In fact, the six-year-old boy is full of energy and has a real passion for learning in the outdoors has been watching the videos and sitting right through them so Sawyer thank you for that I, I'm glad you're enjoying them and I, I hope you like this episode and the episodes from this um, time up at the cabin with the bear I think uh, you probably find that pretty exciting uh, so Riley and uh, Sawyer thanks for watching and and Matt of course thank you for showing the videos to them and sitting down uh, with them I think that's a great thing to do with the family and and I'm glad to uh, to be providing content that's family friendly. So.
have been a moose calling in the background there. It is the rut right now. Kind of nearing the end of the rut up here. And the cows that haven't been bred will be calling all night trying to attract a bull. The bulls will be putting a lot of miles on traveling around looking for those cows. Often if I was to call at night, like call right now, a cow call, then, uh, and you can tune into this video here if you want to see how that's done, how I do that. See, there's a, something breaking branches. I don't know if it's the bear coming up behind me. If he's going to come, he should come now. Although I'm pretty hungry, I don't think he, I'd advise him to fight me for this. So I'm going to just finish this up quickly and I'll see you up in the cabin. Oh, look at that. Mosquitoes. It's only going down to like 5 degrees Celsius tonight. And like I said, this is right at to minus 25 degrees Celsius. So it's going to be super warm. So I'll probably open it up and vent it. Just uh, kind of put it on and off depending on what I need. But with that bear hanging around, I'm going to be listening half the night anyway. I don't think I'll get a great sleep. I'll, if I hear him, I'll probably go down and spook him away if I hear him getting into the dishes at the fire, for example, which is why I leave them there often. I'll leave the dishes at the fire and I'll leave them and I'll put them together so that they make noise if something gets into them. Usually it's a raccoon. I've only ever had one bear come into camp. Yeah, and that was with my wife last year on Philip Edward Island, which is also kind of a pretty cool video. We saw four bears that that uh, weekend, including one that swam out to the island that we were camped on. And of course, my wife's not the most comfortable with bears, so she wasn't too thrilled about that. But I thought it was cool, and I did a so I did a video on the ursac because that was the night that the bear actually went to the tree that I had the ursac tied to and tried to rip it off, and really. You know, spent some time on it by the looks of it and didn't do any damage. So it's a good video on Ursac's website and also on and also on my website and of course YouTube. So I'll put a link up to the video up here or I'll put it in the description down below. Um, anyway, here I am. Super cozy night. Looking forward to getting some rest. It was a pretty tiring day, which like every day working on the cabin seems to be. And I'm getting a little bit more frantic to get things water tight and weather tight before winter sets and I can't believe there's still mosquitoes in here <laughs> anyway I'm rambling like I tend to say in every video so I am going to maybe do some reading and then uh, turn the lights out early and get some sleep and get up early and deal with that bear I guess good morning well I guess I survived the night had a few drinks of water before bed and throughout the night so I had to get up a couple of times and go outside and I didn't see any sign of the bear and I didn't hear it walking around out there throughout the night but we did have some wind come up and it's still windy actually so it kind of muffled some of the sounds but I did hear raccoons they were coming right up around the cabin and they were fighting um, so the fact that they were up here and I heard them but I didn't hear the bear makes you think the bear didn't come around, so. Well, the bear's still there, but I think I figured out what it's doing. <laughs> That's a lot of food in that one. Not my typical breakfast up here, but why waste leftovers? So here I am with a, a dilemma. I want to keep that bear around here. I, I like having bears and I like having wildlife here at the property. But if it's not going to show fear, then it's likely to become a nuisance and maybe a danger to somebody else who's not um, used to interacting with them as much as I am or with pets. So if it continues to act like this, I'm going to have to... I think I'm going to wrap this particular video up right here. So thanks again for watching. Take care and I'll see you again next week.
such a beautiful day today. Sun is just uh, starting to head for the horizon here. It's uh, getting closer to dinner time. It's the day after Canadian Thanksgiving. And for me, this is the absolute, probably the absolute best week of the entire year. It's just beautiful out here. The leaves are dropping, the animals are moving around. It's just spectacular. For me, getting out in nature is probably the most important thing I can do with my life. As much as family's top priority and health is top priority, to me, I can't be a good person, I can't be a happy person if I'm not out here enjoying this. And for obvious reasons. This is obviously where we belong. Unfortunately, as humanity becomes more and more urbanized, people are getting outside far less than they used to. And I'm a firm believer that that's causing issues with our society. It's causing issues with our happiness. Unfortunately, there are a lot of kids that never get the opportunity to get outside. They just don't have parents that um, have made it a priority, and, and therefore they don't get out. And that's a real shame. So my family was not overly outdoorsy. Uh, my parents did take us camping. My grandparents had a trailer up on Georgian Base. So we'd go visit them up there. Um, four kids, of course, money was tight. So my dad was a construction worker. He was also a sheet metal worker. And he would periodically get laid off. And, and times were financially tough, so we didn't have a lot. Um, and then there was added stress of that. But the other thing is that... Uh, father was an alcoholic so even though we did some family things together he and I didn't really spend much time together alone which I don't regret I don't hold have any grudges or anything he stopped drinking 25 years ago and uh, he's a great guy so I, I'm not uh, complaining about him at all it's just the way it is he 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 uh, liked to hang out at the legion with the guys and that's what he would do after work most uh, most days he'd go and drink and play cards and didn't really spend much time with me so like I said I know I don't hold any grudge I have a very good relationship with my father I love him to death and he did introduce me to hunting we hunted a couple of times when I was younger took me to a deer camp uh, near here actually just north of here uh, once when I was 15 first got my when I first got my license and uh, went duck hunting a couple of times but yeah like I said he just didn't have the uh, inclination to go and spend a lot of time in the outdoors with me so that's why a lot of what I do is self-directed I had that passion I, I do um, I thank them my parents of course for introducing me to to nature and was able to get out there and, and uh, gain that love of it to begin with and then, like I said I was self-directed I would just go out and do these things on my own or find uh, like-minded friends from school or from the neighborhood that would join me but they quickly lost interest so did build build some shelters, some cool shelters with these guys, uh, with a couple of friends. Jeff, um, still still friends with him today. Don't see him as much as I'd like to, but um, we used to go out and and uh, hang out in the forest and shoot bows and and uh, build these shelters that we'd sleep in, and even in the middle of the winter. So yeah, it was a pretty cool place to grow up. Neat being right on the edge of town, so we had the benefits of living by a school where we'd go play hockey and and go tobogganing down the hill and and skating on the river and the pond back behind the house so that was great um, but that forest i mean that was my passion so i'd get out there as much as i could and then in my early teens they started clearing that land and uh, started building a subdivision in there so that was heartbreaking for me but um, it kind of a eye-opener to how the world really works that you know think first of all things change and and uh, you really need to remember that there is a lost time for everything and if you live your life and I know I've li learned to live my life that if I assume that whatever I'm doing at that time is a lot maybe the last time I'm ever going to do that then it makes me focus on that thing that I'm doing and and uh, um, and really absorb and appreciate the experience like the time I went to my daughter's soccer games and something I really love doing is you know, going to their soccer games but you know it's just suddenly one year my older daughter decided not to play the, that year and and that was it so t to hold on to those memories of watching her play was pretty special and because I do feel this way I, I do that and I did appreciate that and I and I knew it was going to end it was going to end at some point and my younger daughter's at that stage now too she still plays but uh, she got injured at the beginning of this season and as much as I love watching her play, 
didn't get to do that this year and I thought man I did I really you know, appreciate and make sure I paid attention to every game last year I know it's a small thing and seems foolish but it's one of the things that I really appreciate and then, uh, those little things like watching my daughters play soccer and um, you know I appreciate uh, each and every time so if it's the last time then I've got those memories to hold on to so if you don't have a family member who's willing and able to um, get you outdoors and then uh, find someone else I mean uncles aunts uh, uh, friends and rel other relatives uh, you know there's groups there's online groups there's all kinds of places that you can meet with uh, like-minded people and, and try to get together and even if you live in a small town or a city the local park uh, usually is you know got wildlife and maybe it's just squirrels and pigeons but just to see how they interact with each other there's not much different um, difference between them and this bear down here that you'll see a lot of common uh, characteristics and common behavior uh, from one animal to the next so what you learn about a squirrel as you watch him going about his day collecting food and fighting for territory and all that the same thing happens with this bear down here so that's so that's what I did when I was in uh, that small town it wasn't vast forest and it wasn't the Canadian shield like up here it's just endless forest and it's just spectacular scenery now of course it was developed and mostly farmland down there but I still appreciated it and still got to learn about nature and learn about cycles of um, learn about the seasonal cycles and the, the weather patterns and learn to re read weather learn to read animals learn to canoe and, and how to navigate on a river so doesn't you don't need to have Canadian vast wilderness I know a lot of you guys watching this aren't from here and you don't have access to this much wilderness but go go and find a, a smaller piece and, and try to um, appreciate that and and make the most of that and then maybe one day you can get out and see a place like this so that's it i think the main takeaway for me this week was about you know getting outside and and about the next generation and and uh, inspiring others and inspiring the younger generation to get outside and maybe get off the electronics and and uh see what's like uh, see what real minecraft is like see what real forest is like and by the comments that I'm hearing a lot of parents are sharing my videos with their kids and that's fantastic I'm hoping that's either their first introduction or that's an introduction or a furthering of what they're learning from you guys taking them out on your own I'm assuming that's the case if you're watching this channel I'm sure you're outdoors to begin with and you're already taking your kids out so uh, really happy to hear that well but maybe there's kids in your lives that uh, that you know of that that don't have that role model don't have that person taking them out we should reach out to those people on offer to take them out and, and introduce them to this. Who knows, you can turn the, that person on to a life of happiness, in my opinion, to become nature-oriented. I think it's automatically going to add more happiness to their lives. So thanks again for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. If you get a chance, get out there, enjoy this beautiful fall weather. Hopefully I'll see you out here someday. Take care.